And you know what they've done to us, too. Well, they try to steal the flag from us. They're terrible more patriotic than us. I'll bet if I asked for the veterans to stand in here, there'd be a multitude of people stand. But I bet you if you went down to the Chamber of Commerce and said, oh, you veterans stand up, you wouldn't have many people standing. Because the real patriots are the working class people. Working class people either work and fuel the world with the war effort like they did in World War I and II, or they go off and die on the battlefields. That's the truth. I speak been a year in Vietnam. I never met a millionaire. I look for him. Nobody come up to me and say, I like to introduce myself. I'm a millionaire. Because the millionaires weren't there. So when they say they're the patriots, that's a lie. Then they try to steal God right from us. They take the Bible and they wave it at us. They take the Bible and they point it at us. And sometimes they thump it. I've got a suggestion for them. Do what we do. Open it up. Take a look in there. And you'll find two principles, or maybe three, that you can take home with you here. One is, the Bible tells you how hard it is for a rich person to get to heaven. You know what they say about that? You can get a camel through the eye of a needle before a rich man can get to heaven. But there are those who will tell you that if Jesus comes back tomorrow, he's going straight to Capitol Hill. And he's going to ask for one more tax break for the millionaires. That is not true. So don't buy this stuff that you're not patriotic if you're standing up for working folks. And don't buy this stuff that you're not religious and believing in God in the way you should. I'm going to tell you what else the Bible tells us about this. Honor thy mother and father. We're the ones who are saying don't cut Social Security and don't cut Medicare, and they're the ones saying let's cut it. I suggest to you that the older you get, the more help folks need. They've earned these benefits. They've given a lifetime to have those benefits, and I think it behooves every single one of us to stand up and fight for those people who need it the most. The other thing the Bible continues to tell you about standing up for the poor and lifting the poor, and the Bible Bible tells you one last thing I hate to preach today. I'll probably be cussing here in a minute. But <laughs> the Bible tells you you're going to be judged someday by how you treat the least of these. There won't be a Republican in heaven if that's the truth because they stand up with the most of these. And that we should be standing up for the least of these. <laughs> I love this job that I have, but I would take one job, and the labor movement ought to try to get me this job. They should make me the spokesperson for the White House. They need me. Now, Barack Obama's not going to do that because he knows me. Now, let me, let me ask you to think about something. For a year and a half, they beat this man up because we don't think you were born here. Well, you know what? If I had been a White House spokesman, let me tell you how I'd have handled that. And I think this is a good idea. Sarah Palin said that. So I don't believe the president was born here. And if I was the spokesman for the president, I'd say, okay, Sarah, here's the deal. When you show me a high school diploma, I'll show you the president's birth certificate. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh did that too. And I would say, all right, Rush, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You go down to the clinic and you pass a drug test and I'll show you the president's birth certificate. <laughs> Michelle, ba oh, Michelle Bachman said that. I say, look, Michelle, if you can prove that you're smarter than a fifth grader, I'll show you the president's birth certificate. <laughs> And Glenn Beck, I'd say, Glenn, if you can get a doctor anywhere to tell me that you're not completely, utterly insane, I'll show you the president's birth certificate. Now, don't you think that's what we need out of the White House for a change? Do you think I got a chance to get that job? <laughs> 
America is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We all say that, and nobody ever figures out what we're talking about. Who are the people? Well, I'll tell you who we are. We're the farmers that fed the nation. We're the nurses that healed the nation. We're the firefighters that saved the nation. We're the school teachers that taught the nation. We're the construction workers who built this nation. We're the police officers who protect this nation. We're the communication workers who connect this nation. We're the public employees who serve this nation. And yes, we're the coal miners that energize this nation. We are America. We're the men and women of the American labor movement. And we've got a plan to get our country moving again. We don't need the Democrats. We don't need the Republicans. We just need them to give us our God-given right to, by being a citizen of the United States to be able to organize the unorganized and we'll fix America's economic problems. All you've got to do when you hear this debate ongoing is say, you want higher wages? Join a union. You want better pensions? Join a union. You want more time off? Join a union. You want a safer workplace? Join a union. You want a voice at work? Join a union. You want better health care? Join a union. You want to end poverty? Join a union. You want democracy in the workplace? Join a union. You want to grow the middle class and make it larger? Join a union. You want a better America? Join a union. And if you just want to tell the boss to kiss your ass, join a union. <laughs> I gotta be careful or I won't be asked to come back again. <laughs> But you know what? We can't get these things unless we do a couple of things. This movement has always been at its best whenever we're out in the streets and when we're demonstrating and we're striking and we're marching. So we got to get off our asses and on our feet. We got to get out the door and hit the street. And we got to be about the business of marching. Gandhi marched. Jesus marched. Dr. King marched. Cesar Chavez marched. Mother Jones marched. Marched. Moses marched. Now, I gotta say this too. I don't want to disappoint you. Moses didn't send Pharaoh facts. He didn't tweet a message to Pharaoh. He didn't email Pharaoh. He didn't get on Facebook and say something about Pharaoh. He didn't phone Pharaoh. He went to see Pharaoh. And let me tell you something. In the United States of America, we got a thousand Pharaohs out there that we ought to be going about the business of seeing. Then, once we get about the business of marching, we can say there ain't nobody going to turn us around. That comes right out of the civil rights movement. There ain't nobody going to turn us around. Oh, Rush Limbaugh, he ain't going to turn us around. Glenn Beck ain't going to turn us around. Oh, Chris Christie up in New Jersey, he's not going to turn us around. Ann Coder ain't going to turn us around. Sarah Palin ain't going to turn us around. John Kasich's not going to turn us around. Michelle Bachman's not going to turn us around. Newt Gingrich won't turn us around. Mitt Romney won't turn us around. The courthouse won't turn us around. The jailhouse won't turn us around. Nobody will turn us around. Then working people in this country can stand up and say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty we're free at last. Thank you. Will not give up on